everyone. My name is Matt. And I'm Lori. And today we are going to talk about church forms. Thank you very much for joining us today for our uh, webinar on church forms. Now, specifically, we are going to talk about not just forms, because that would be a very boring webinar. <laughs> just talk about forms. We're going to talk about forms that actually get filled out. That's the whole reason you're here. Absolutely. Because it's one thing to make a connection card, right? It's a whole other thing to get somebody to fill it out. Yes, that's a whole other battle. So today, we are going to talk about several things. We're going to talk about forms that churches typically use, a lot of different forms. Some forms you're probably already using, maybe some you're not. Hopefully, maybe this can inspire you to use a few other forms just to streamline some of your processes. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about why the forms don't get filled out and talk about a few reasons, a few things, and maybe even address some of the problems that we've seen churches use because we see a lot of forms <laughs> yes, <laughs> working we do. here at Church Track. Uh, we're going to talk about the problems that those forms cause. Right. And then also how to fix your forms and talk about a lot more. In fact, we even have some free resources we're going to share with you during and after this webinar. So stay tuned. Absolutely. Lori is going to be in the chat. She's the one that's typing everything in. She's going to be manning the chat, or I should say womaning the chat. Womaning the chat. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we like being dorks around here. Uh, so you can ask your questions in there. We'll have a little bit of Q&A time at the end as well. So if you have a question that somehow we miss, just hang on to it. We'll get to it at the end. Uh, but we'll also maybe even call out a few questions. Lori might feed me some questions. And we'll answer them live. So we're going to have a lot of fun today, but be sure to ask your questions as we go so that we can get you taken care of, okay? Now, one thing that I want to point out before we really dive into the meat and potatoes of this webinar is we got some resources that you can uh, that you can use when it comes to forums or anything else to do with Church Track. We have a YouTube channel that you can subscribe to. Just go to YouTube.com, search Church Track software. I've actually I got the link up right here. I'm just going to go ahead and drop it in chat. Here we go. There it is. So go ahead and click on that link that I just dropped in the chat. That's to our YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe. we got over 150 videos That's that crazy. we have created just for you to help you use your Church Track account. We even have past webinars like this one that you can watch. So go ahead and subscribe there. Uh, we also have a great Facebook group. I have that as well. Let me pull up that and share the link. If you're a Church Track user, go ahead and subscribe, even if you're on your free trial. Mm -hmm. Don't subscribe, actually. Just request to just join. Request to join. <laughs> it's a user yep. group. Go ahead and request to join. We would love to see you there. It's thousands of ministers from all around the world that use Church Track and that love Church Track and ministry so much that they would love to take and answer any questions that you have about either Church Track or ministry. And then also, there's something that you can use in your account. I personally like the green help in the upper right-hand corner of your software. There you can access our user guide, which happens to have a lot of our YouTube video links um, embedded. You can also create a support ticket to ask questions or get assistance from our wonderful support team. And you can schedule a phone call if you just are in a pickle and you need some additional assistance. Yep. Lori is biased. She is our support manager. So she's very, she loves our support team. We all love our support team. We're honestly very Thanks. proud of the work that you've done putting together this team and training them and getting them to help churches. We have a great team. Yes, all we do. Around, all around, we have a great team. Yes. All right. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right on into our Church Track Forms webinar, our Church Forms <laughs> webinar. <laughs> so first thing, first things first, we're going to talk about the forms that churches use. And again, you probably already use a lot of these forms, but let's talk about all of them that we typically see, because maybe some forms you're not using and you may benefit from. Absolutely. Because we see churches use a lot of different forms. Sometimes they use forms they shouldn't be using. True. Yeah. But that's also what we're here to do today. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about our forms, Matt. Right. This is going to go way beyond just our connect card to connect with first time guests. Absolutely. So let's, let's go ahead and rattle off a few that we've seen. Uh, we've got a whole list here. There's a volunteer form. Mm -hmm. There's a prayer request form. Yes. Church membership form, baptism form. There's, the, of course, the event registration form. We yep. love event registration around here. Yeah, we'll talk about event registrations and how you can use Church Track to make it even better and more streamlined mm -hmm. a little bit later. So stay tuned. There's a pledge card form, mm -hmm. possibly a background check form. Keep in mind, background checks are usually performed. Ha, huh? there's a play on words. That, I nerded out for a moment, <laughs> forgive me. Um, that's usually done by a third party mm -hmm. integration. However, you can put that form in Church Track. Yes. Um, there's a liability waiver mm -hmm. that you might have to fill out. And, of course, a facilities use format. Yes. Because some bigger churches have to share 
their their all of their little places that they have yes. meetings and stuff. And frankly, these are just the typical forms we see, the most common ones. There right. are other forms that we see churches use, and maybe some of them your your church is using as well. But we're going to talk about these common forms, and also we're going to talk about why these forms don't get filled out. So now we're going to talk about why church forms, forms. don't get filled out. Uh, there's a few reasons that we've come across, and this is just stuff that since we talk to churches every day, every we, day. we see these mistakes commonly. And also, you know, we serve at churches. Absolutely. Uh, we've served at a lot of different churches over the years, and we've seen these struggles there as well, just in our own personal lives, right. in our own interactions with Up churches. Up close and personal. Yes. <laughs> so reason number one why church forms don't get filled out is a lot of forms ask way too many questions. So let me, I actually have an example up here. Wes, uh, he's not here today, but Wes and I kind of trolled the internet to find some examples to share with you of why some of these forms, or, or some of the problems we see these forms have. So this is our first example. Uh, this is, I think, a template that we found just on a website that any church can download this template and make it their own. This is so bad. Please don't use this template. <laughs> and the reason so why bad. is because it asks way too many questions. Mm -hmm. This is literally just a connect card. So like that card that guests that after their first or second or third visit, they fill out so you can follow up with them later in the week. Uh, this, I mean, look, let's, let's take a look at this real quick. First of all, you don't need to know their age group, okay? You don't need to have that on your connect card. You can get that information, their birth date or their age group. Later. Later. You don't need to have that here on a connect card. That you're going to drop in the offering plate and everybody on the finance team is going to read. Yes. Uh, today's date, I mean, I can kind of see, you know, needing to know that, but not really. And then below that, uh, first, second, and third visit. See, here's the thing. Like, just this is just my personal experience. Uh, my wife and I, when we visit a church to decide if we want to go, we probably don't make the decision to actually sign this form here mm -hmm. until about a month, month and a half in. So we're way past the third visit Correct. before we fill that out. And so this isn't even relevant for us. And we'll talk about relevance a little bit later. Uh, and then also, how did you hear about us? Why do you need to know that? Like, here's, here's the deal when it comes to questions on a form. <laughs> First of all, you ha the questions need to actually matter and be relevant for the form or the purpose of the form. And then also, you need to actually only ask questions that you're, that you're actually going to do something with. So whether or not this is their first, second, or third visit, does that matter? Does it make any difference? That's, these are the questions that you have to ask yourself, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in detail later. Mm -hmm. And then there's a whole other half of the Connect card. Uh, what's next? Where you can check off what you want to do next. What, if you're dedicating your life for Christ, if you want to talk to a pastor, if you want to get involved, you can also leave prayer requests or ask any questions. See, the thing about this is like the prayer requests and questions, I understand why the church would add that. But also, I think it would be more meaningful if you simply tell the, 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 that person, that guest, to turn that card into a volunteer, and then right. the volunteer asks those questions. Right. To have some interpersonal relationship yes. there. Yes. Yes. That's ideal. Another flaw or another mistake that we see a lot of church forums make is that there's too much text on the form. So let's use this as an example. This is another template that we found on some other site that you can download. And here's the problem. Let me zoom in. I don't know if you can see this on your screen. And if you're watching this on a smartphone, you definitely can't. But I'll go ahead and zoom in. Look at this big, there's a brick of text right at the top of this welcome connection card. You just missed half the sermon. Yeah. If you're handing this to a guest to fill out, and they're not going to have time to read that whole paragraph of text while you're talking to them and chatting with them. Absolutely. Or while they're trying to wrangle their kids. Right. And this is the first, I mean, they have no idea where to go or what to do or where, what the kids need to do. So they're, they're <laughs> stressed out. Or you hand it to them and they sit down and then they start to read it during the service, but then they're missing the service. And that's the whole reason they're there. Yeah. But, I mean, look at this. I mean, visiting any church for the first time can be a very intimidating experience. <laughs> why, would you, why would you even put some of this text here? You can just say this from the pulpit just to make people feel welcome. There you go. You don't actually need to add this to the card. And, I mean, some, some things are kind of cool about this card. Like, there's a tear-off section at the bottom with the, church, the, the pastor's um, uh, contact info. That's their business card. That's but creative. You could put that in a QR code. But you see, you're already ahead of the curve. We're going to talk about QR codes as well. 
Uh, I'm old and I'm ahead of the curve. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> you can, a lot of the information you want to add to these cards, you can put in a QR code and have on a web page somewhere else. You can mm -hmm. kind of offload that content elsewhere. And I can do it later and not miss the worship experience exactly. or the sermon. Another big mistake we see is that uh, forums will have questions that are not relevant or in some cases even infringe on privacy. I've got another tab open here of a good example. This is a volunteer application form. Now, again, I, I keep saying this. I sound like a broken record, but I kind of understand the thought process of why churches add this stuff to forms. But you have to be smart about how you create these forms and what information you ask. Mm -hmm. Because this volunteer application form, to me, looks like a job application form. It's oppressive. It is. <laughs> that's a good word, oppressive. It's oppressive. Some of these forms really are oppressive in how much information they're asking for. So let's take a look. I mean, this, this form asks for the person's name. That's fine. But like their address, their phone number, and their email address. And see, here's the deal. If they're a member, they ought already ought to have that yeah. information. If they're filling out a volunteer application form, they're probably already a committed member. Right. And you've already got this information on file. Just take their name. You can pull up the rest online on your church management software. And then below that, they even ask for like their occupation. Well, Matt, let, me, let me zoom in on this just Kathy, to make sure everybody Kathy can read says this. some of this is it driven by insurance purposes. I, Kathy, I assume that you're talking about insurance purposes for the church. Like but liability, you mean? I guess, but why would you need my place of employment or my occupation for insurance purposes? I yeah. mean, for or, or my last pastor for that matter. I mean, yeah, like this form over here on the right hand side, they ask for denominational background, the name of the previous church, the pastor's name, and the church's or pastor's phone number. I mean, this is basically a background check for a volunteer application. And again, some people may come up with justifications for why they need this, and you can make that argument. But I'm here to tell you, your members, your volunteers, they're not going to want to sit down and fill out all of this information just to jump on board and start serving in ministry. Right. The, the general rule of thumb for these forms, and this is just an illustration that I, that I have kind of in my head to understand my own approach to creating forms for my church, is this. A, a form is basically like a race. And the member is standing at the start of the race. And the finish line is the completed form. Mm -hmm. And every field you add to that form is, is a, a hurdle. hurdle that you're adding to the track that they have to jump over to finish it and get to the finish line. So don't make it harder or more oppressive. <laughs> to, to, I, yeah. I, it, I mean, and this is only page one. Yeah, this, this is, is side one of this form. The other half, I, I've never even seen it, and I don't want to, because it, it, it just, it, I'm, I'm intimidated by this already. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> another, another mistake that we see a lot of forms make uh, with churches is that the form just looks bad. Now, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Correct. Okay? So it's, Correct. this is all very subjective. But let's take a look at this as an example. But Matt, honestly... We are in Florida. Yeah. Okay. I understand the premise behind the idea of this form and the in the, the imagery. imagery yeah. mm -hmm. But water's blue, mm -hmm. first of all. Second of all, the way that this is set up, it looks sprinkled. I don't know but any other word to describe. It looks like it's been wadded up and then laid out and then uh -huh. printed on. And that's not a good look. And not to mention, like, there's a lot going on with this form, even though this is I mean, this is either the size of like a business card or maybe a three by five mm -hmm, card or something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. So it's small. And there's already a lot packed in just because the background image makes it look a little busy. And, and it'll be hard to read. And then like not just to, to piggyback off of that hard to read, like the font that they chose to know you better and minister to you more effectively. Please complete this card. That's kind of hard to read other than uh, besides me zooming in to read it. Mm -hmm. You have to be thoughtful about the fonts. I mean, and speaking of fonts, like there's three different fonts going on with this form here. And we don't need all these different kinds of fonts. And like even the font they chose at the top and the bottom where it says, let's get acquainted. I mean, this even looks like Times New Roman's like less appreciated cousin. <laughs> <laughs> you got to think about the way your church presents itself, even mm -hmm. in, in when it comes to fonts. Again, your form doesn't have to look like the best form that's ever been created, but it can't look bad either. A bad-looking form is... Or dated. Is a, or dated. Very dated. 
A bad looking form is something that a lot of members are just going to set aside and not want to touch or mm -hmm. look at. Mm -hmm. Again, these are hurdles, even though they're subtle, these are all hurdles that you're putting between that person and the completed form. And also, don't forget, and, and I, I've pointed this out to you, the word acquainted. Yes. An acquaintance would indicate to me that you want to keep me on the periphery, that you don't want me to be a part mm -hmm. of your group. So you just want to talk to me, make make nice, and then keep on going. Yeah. Let's and, yeah, know, let's get familiar. Yes. Let's you know, let's let's talk, let's chat, let's have coffee. Don't put it on your form card. Say it in person. Yeah. You don't need to be informal. It's it's I think the church that made this is probably trying to be like <laughs> Jane you're, said you're, acquainted is misspelled. <laughs> oh really? Uh, <laughs> We didn't create the yeah. we didn't create a form. I yeah. promise you. <laughs> These are examples we found online. So that's even better, Jane. I like thanks, it. Thanks for pointing that out. That's hilarious. Yeah. So uh, spell check your forms before <laughs> you finalize them. It's another tip. Um, and another another mistake that we see, another flaw that we see, a churches make when it comes to their forms and how they handle them, is that people don't know where the form is, and that's that's a subtle one. But it's but also it's an obvious one. Yeah, it's also really important. You really need to know where to find the form if you need yes. to rent the facility or whatever. So let's let I mean uh. let's think about it. When it comes to forms and their placement, a lot of churches will have at least some kind of form in the back of the chairs or the right. pews. That's maybe usually a, a connect card. Yeah, the connect card or, or your maybe pledge card. A pledge card or like your your envelope, your donation mm -hmm. envelope mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Maybe like your membership form to sign up to be a member right. or something of that nature. So they'll be strategic with what forms are right there in the sanctuary. In your face. Right there in your face. And those are that's important. That's a good part of your strategy to be strategic with what forms you put immediately within reach for your members. Yeah. However, there are lots of other forms like uh, facility usage form, liability form, some of the less... Even your volunteer form. Yeah, even your volunteer form. I mean... You need to have a centralized location where you keep all of your forms. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is this. One, it simplifies your messaging from the pulpit when you're trying to get people to sign a form or you're trying to promote something. Tell them to go here you tell and them, there it is. Yeah, tell you know exactly where every, where they all need to go. You don't have to remember that this form is over here and that form is over there. You don't have to you don't have to keep all of that in mind and you don't right. have to be confusing with your messaging where people need to go. Your members and your volunteers will all have the same place that they know that they need to go to get to a particular form. Continuity. Yes, continuity. And also it simplifies it for your volunteers because no matter what, no matter which member comes up to them and asks them, where do I go to fill this out? They have the exact same answer every time. Exactly. Go to the welcome center or wherever it uh -huh. is your central location is. Maybe it's your office. Right. Whatever it is. Right. Have a central location where all of your forms are. That can be the volunteer form, the facility usage, everything. And again, it's less confusing for your members, too, because this way I don't have to think, okay, if I want to volunteer, I have to go to this web page. If I need to use the facilities, I need to download this PDF here. And if I want to sign up to do this, I have to go talk to this person. I just know. I just go here. I right. go to the same place. I have the same place. And, and then who are you going to turn the form into? This is another thing, is to make sure that everybody knows where the form is directed yes. once it's filled out. Whether that's the church office, it's the church secretary, it's submitted online and it goes to wherever it needs to go automatically. The continuity is important because that's what's going to let people mm -hmm. easily access your forms, fill out the information and get it to someone. Yes. Um, if none of that happens or if only one step or the other happens but it's not followed through, you've lost... Yeah. Whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. Yes. And again, you've you've just shot yourself in the foot. You've done all this work for, for nothing. nothing. For nothing. So this is why we're doing this whole webinar, just mm -hmm. to streamline this and make this simpler so that you can get the forms filled out that you need to fill out and it will simplify all of your processes. Now these these problems or these mistakes that we see, whether it be that it, they're the there's too much too many questions or the questions are irrelevant or people don't know where the forms are. There are certain or they can't read the form. <laughs> they can't read the form. Uh, there are problems that this creates for a lot of churches. And these problems can be summed up, summed up with three things. In fact, three M's. Well, Lori likes to call them the three misses. Three misses. The three misses. Three strikes you're out. Uh, the first problem is it creates missed opportunities. Absolutely. So like the Connect card. If you don't know, if, if a guest doesn't know where the Connect card is or where to turn in that Connect mm -hmm. card, 
they may either they either don't fill it out or they fill it out and they don't know where to turn it in and it's just lost. Mm -hmm. And so you'd miss the opportunity to connect with them later in the week and hopefully integrate them with the church. Uh, the second problem. Or, it, wait, wait. Or just reach out and say, hi, we were so glad you were here. Yes. But don't go knock on their door. Yeah, that's, <laughs> especially, I don't know, it, that, that I guess probably worked back in the, in the 80s. past. Yeah, in the 80s. <laughs> I wouldn't even I mean, alive back then, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, some of us were alive in the 80s, and we did visitation. And it was great to go knock on somebody's door. But today, people don't invite you in their home, mm -hmm. and they are not very receptive to that. So make that connection on a personal level, either in person via send me a text message i will respond i i got a troubling text message this morning um but that's a method of communication mm -hmm. that our church uses it, yeah. it works it's effective yes, yes. and um, people are way more receptive to that and young ever. people have said recently um i was told by a parent that their child said that email was antiquated i was not aware that email mm. was antiquated but it is I mean, I'm a millennial. I'm kind of in both of those. I'm kind of in the the transition for, away from, like the the impersonal stuff. I'm I'm okay with email, but even I prefer text over email. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the second problem this causes is miscommunication. So, like with the church usage form, let's say let's say I'm at a church and mm, I it's want a big deal. yeah, and I want to use part of the facilities for like an event that I'm holding, mm -hmm. and so I go talk to. Uh, the deacon, Brother Andrew. And Andrew, I say, hey, you know, can I, is it okay if I use, I have got something going on. Is it okay? the fellowship hall going this yeah. weekend. And Brother Andrew's like, yeah, sure, come on out. You can use it. Well, Brother Andrew didn't realize that there is a usage form because he wasn't trained on the fact that there's this particular form that has to be filled out as part of our processes. And so I show up. put into scheduling on yeah. church track. But some other volunteer, but some other member also wants that facility at the same time, and they did the proper thing of filling out that form. So I show up, and it's taken. It's double booked. And that's a problem. So having your forms... Somebody just got mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah somebody is upset, and it's not going to be pretty. So having your forms easily accessible, having all of your members trained on knowing where they are and the fact that you know everybody needs to fill these out for these certain processes, that will avoid problems like that. And the third problem this creates is uh, mismanagement. These misses got to go. Yeah, all these, all three of these misses got to get out of here. So mismanagement. Let's say you have, here's an example. Let's say you have a <laughs> potluck. You got a potluck coming up. It's going to be a big community event for your church to, to reach out to the community. And uh, you don't have a sign-up form for it. So everybody assumes that somebody else is bringing the fried chicken. And so you don't got enough fried chicken at that potluck. I don't know about you, but I think that's a disaster. That's a Absolutely. tragedy. I, I, I've, I've had to go to Publix and get fried chicken yes. for the church because... We're, we're Southern. Didn't. Yeah, we're Southern, so we're maybe we're a little biased, but we like our fried chicken. <laughs> you, gotta have fried, you can't have a church get together without fried chicken. Yeah, it's, it's basically the law. So you have to have all of these forms in place to avoid the missed opportunities, the miscommunication, and the mismanagement. <laughs> So let's talk about how to fix your forms to avoid these mistakes and increase the likelihood that somebody will actually fill out one of these forms. The first, and this is the first tip, okay. is to keep it short. And here's what I mean. You don't want someone to have to, skin, to, to read through and spend several minutes reading through a form, especially if they're like a guest and it's a connect card and you just want to gather their contact information. By general rule of thumb, somebody should be able to just scan the form and understand what's there and what information they need in about 10 seconds. That's kind of crazy, but it makes sense. Yes. Um, so this is taking the next step, whether you're a new member or a regular attendee. This is a big deal, like for your Connect cards. So you need to keep it as simple and short as possible. And that leads us to the next tip. Okay. Keep it simple. Yes. K-I-S-S. -S. Yes. Keep it simple, stupid. Forms should be able to be read and understood very quickly, like I mentioned, in, t in about 10 seconds. Uh, your question should, re should only require recall thinking as opposed to critical thinking. Uh, this is sort of the, this is the, the rule of thumb. This is sort of the illustration that I have in my mind for how to understand this. I think back to when I was in like high school and college and I was taking tests. I always, whenever I was handed the test for the first time, I would flip through it and see how many essay questions the, the test had and how many multiple choice questions there were. 
And that told me how hard or how easy this, this test was going to be. I would, I would be able to, to tell right away. Yep. So keep that makes it, sense. The, and, and I bring this up because uh, multiple choice questions were always way simpler than like essay questions because the answer, in multiple choice, the answer is there. You just have to pick Figure the right one. Whereas with an essay, you have to use your critical thinking and draw on all of your studying or lack of studying, <laughs> like, which was in my case very often, to try to conjure up the answer to that essay question, whereas multiple choice was much simpler. Absolutely. So when it comes to even creating your forms and framing them and, and asking the questions, make sure you simplify it as much as possible to the point where you're not just asking how often would you be able to serve on like a volunteer form. You just give them check boxes or options, weekly, monthly. There you go. Daily, hourly. <laughs> give, them, give them options to check off rather than give them just a blank line that they have to fill, fill in. Because, yeah. I mean, I don't even, like, what, if you did that, they wouldn't even know what's, what's proper. Like, are you saying on Tuesdays? Like, where is your yeah. need? Yeah. That, that would even be more helpful. Exactly. Uh, also, keep it relevant. This is the third tip. Always and only ask questions or get information that's relevant for the purpose of that form. Right. Don't make it a, a generic form that covers everything. Mm -mm. Keep your form specific and relevant. Never ask a question unless you intend to do something with the information in that question. That's a good point. Like that, Don't make it a hurdle. Yeah, like one of the forms I showed you, I think it was a connect form asking if it was the first, second, or third visit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is that information going to do for you? Right? Does it does it funnel that person into a different process, or do you do you actually have a place in your church management software that you put that information? If the answer to both of those is no, then you should just eliminate that question altogether. It's completely irrelevant. It's it's entirely useless. Um, and another tip is just to make it accessible. And there are two ways to make it accessible. First of all, like we mentioned, have a physical version <laughs> of all your forms and have a central place where all of your forms are stored, just right. so that everybody knows exactly where they need to go to get the form that they need. We also recommend having a digital or virtual version of all of your forms as well, with a link or a QR code that takes people exactly where they need to go. So much easier. It, it makes it so much easier. And the reason why is because you can put, a, you can put QR codes up everywhere so that people can just scan it. Mm -hmm. Also, like in my case at my church, on my phone, we, I ha we use Church Track and I have the Church Connect app on my phone and all of our forms are on Church Connect, there which means that I carry my forms everywhere I go. And you, and you have access to them whenever you need them. Yes. And so I can just copy the link and send it to that person, mm -hmm. or I can just help fill it out for them right then and there. I can right just pull my there. phone out and take care of what needs to be taken care of right then and there. It makes it way simpler, and it also means that I don't have to walk all the way across the church to that central location to get to the forms that I need. We can just, right where we're standing, take care of that form right away. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about, we're going to actually talk about now some physical and digital forms, and we're going to talk about how to make them look nice, too. That's Absolutely. another thing. I'm very excited about this part, okay. Matt. Very so he, excited. So here we go. I actually have Canva pulled up right now. And this is why we're talking about Canva. So we actually did a whole webinar yes, a while, a couple weeks ago, on Canva for churches. I'm actually, I have it pulled up here. I'm going to go ahead and share it in the, uh, in the, in the chat. So I'll go ahead and Please drop see. that link in here. There we go. So I just dropped the link for the, the Canva for Churches webinar. Go ahead and watch this. Not, not now, yeah, but not in now. a little bit. Yeah, at later. Go ahead and open up that link now so it's in a tab <laughs> waiting for you when this webinar is done. But that whole webinar, we actually sat down and talked about how to use Canva to design things mm -hmm. for your church. You can use your own brand kit. We even mentioned another resource I've got it pulled up here. Uh, it's called Cooler, so I'll go, I've got it up in a tab right here. You can actually generate palettes for your church. If, you're, if your church doesn't already have its branding nailed down, you can go ahead and create a whole palette. My pastor, when he launched our church, he created this palette here. I'm just showing you this as an example. This is our church's branding colors, uh, and he generated it right here on this website called Coolers. It's coolers.co. I'll drop that in the chat as well. It's a free resource. You don't have to have... Uh, let me see. Let me pull up the slide. There we go. All right. You don't have to have uh, an account on Coolers to create your palette. It's really quick and easy and a lot of fun, actually. I was showing Lori how to use it earlier. Cool. She was kind of freaking out about it. She was having a blast. But you can use Coolers to create your color scheme and then jump into Canva 
And we actually, I actually, over the past week or so, sat down and generated these templates. This is a template that I'm gonna share with you here in just a little bit. I'm gonna share the link to these templates in just a minute. You can jump into Canva and take this template, add your own colors, change the fonts, make it what you need it to be, but this is to give you physical cards and forms that you can use for your church, and they look really nice. In fact, if I scroll down, this is more than just like a template for your Connect card, if I scroll down, I've got a volunteer card here, uh, a prayer request card here, and this is, I even have different um, uh, dimensions. Like what I'm showing you here, these are three by five cards. I have a four by eight card, so it's nice and thin and tall. I'll zoom in just so everybody can see it because it looks really small on the screen right now. Again, these are just the same thing as the other cards, but I've just got them in a different dimensions just so that you can have whatever your church prefers mm -hmm. to use. But you can, I'm gonna share these with you sometime by the end of this webinar. You can jump in here, change these templates, customize them to fit your church's needs, even add your own colors. Like this black and yellow, this is my church's uh, color scheme. If I click on the background, I can change that to, that orange is actually church track orange. So you can you can change the colors to be whatever you need it to be, whatever you want it to be, just to tweak Perfect. it. And Yeah, there you go. And it's really fast and simple. Again, I'm not gonna go into any more detail on this. We have a whole webinar dedicated to it. Go ahead and watch that later. But I'm gonna share these templates with you in this webinar so that you can jump in and start creating really good looking, simple and easy forms for your members to fill out. What's really cool about this too, and this is what Matt and I were talking about earlier, is you can use these formats to actually create your form cards in church track as well. Yes. So it's so cool because you can you can design things that you can then implement into your church track webpage yes. and use it there. So it, it's you're only limited to your imagination and th that makes it so cool. I'm sorry, the, the coolest thing is just amazing <laughs> to me. And so these are these are the templates. Let's talk about, this is like the connection card. So I've already got the form here for the connection card to connect with a guest to, to submit their contact info. Um, all I ask is for like their name, email and phone number, or either email or phone number, whichever they prefer in, in terms of their preferred contact. And then a, a little check, a little checklist where they can say that they're just a, uh, a first time guest or they're interested in learning more or they were accepting Christ as their savior. That's Which like the most, important. It's the most important thing in the entire world. Uh, and again, this is very, I kept it very simple. I only have three things to fill out. It's very short. It's immediately relevant because this is just to connect with them later in the week. This is all of this connect card needs to be. You don't Absolutely. need the dozens of other fields that we saw in the other examples. So, so yes. Somebody actually said um, emails are antiquated, so they would just use the SMS option. Yeah, they would just use the SMS <laughs> option. That's fine. Yeah, again, uh, in this, at least in this template, this field is asking for either email or phone, right. whichever the person prefers. So they can even choose which one they prefer. So again, I'll share this, I'll share this link with you here in just a few minutes. Just hang tight. But let's talk about creating the, that's the physical form. Let's talk about the virtual ver version. So if I go into my Church Track account, I've got Church Connect pulled up. This is the uh, web app that Church Track offers all standard and plus subscribers. So if you have a Church Track account, you have this at no extra charge to create a, an app for your members. I've got it here. I've got actually, if you look here, I've got this Connect With Us card. This is the form for the connection for guests and any other members that want to submit their contact info. So if I click on it, I can update this. In fact, this uh, connect with us image right here, uh, we, we customized that image in Canva as well, dropped it in here just to customize the way that this card looks in Church Connect. And whenever someone goes to the Church Connect app for this church and taps on that card, it takes them to the form. I'm actually gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like. Our, our uh, behind the scenes guy, David, our video guy is gonna show you this phone I have hooked up here. So this is what the app looks like. I'll go ahead and actually close it and you'll see the icon in the top left-hand corner of the screen. So you can even customize the way the app looks on your member's smartphone. If I tap on that, it opens up the app and it takes me to where I can get to that form in a virtual format. So it says connect with us. If I tap on that, there's the form. And again, it's just asking for their name, their email or their phone number. This one's a little bit different. They have a little drop down menu where they can say they'd like to uh, learn more about Christianity or about the church or get baptized you name it, and ask for a prayer request. But again, even though it's a little bit different than the physical form, it's still very, very simple. It's just asking for four pieces of information, name, email, what they would like to do, and a quick prayer request. That's it. 
So keep it short, keep it simple. You can still do that with the form cards. Keep in it church. relevant. Keep it relevant. Yes, again, this is only for connections, so that's all the questions have to do with. So that's like that's a that's a typical connection form or a connection card, both the physical in Canva and the digital in Church Connect. Uh, what's another good example of a card or a, the, a form? The, the prayer request form. Prayer request. Yes, thank you. So in fact, if I go back into those templates, if I scroll down, yeah, there we go. So there I have it set up already. I've already got a prayer request form. Again, this is the three by five format. If I go back to the four by eight and scroll down, there's the volunteer card. Need prayer. There we go. So this is a, just another format for that physical card. We've got the prayer request card here. Again, you can customize this. I'll share this link by the, at the end of the webinar. There you go. Yeah, you can customize this and make it really easy. How to church track logo look in Google Play Store. Uh, Andrea, uh, Google uh, Church Tracks app is not in the Google Play Store. Or in the, uh, I, in the Apple App Store. Yeah, you just go to the Church Connect page and then download that to the home screen of the smartphone. Okay. That's how you download the app onto somebody's phone. So this is the form card. This is the physical form card. It looks great. Again, you can customize this template with your colors and your fonts, and you can tweak it to make it exactly what you need it to be. But at least gets, this gets you started. You know, 80, 90 percent of the work is already yeah. done here. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the virtual form, Church Connect, again, has you covered. If I go back into the Church Track account, if you see here, I've got a prayer request card, and I can customize that image. And I can even, if I go, if I click on that image, I can edit the card and even change the form questions. Mm -hmm. So if I click this form questions button here, I'll zoom in just to make sure everybody can see this. Come on, there we go. If I click on this form questions button, it takes me to where I can customize the form fields anytime. And again, I'm showing you the customize, the behind the scenes uh, 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 way of customizing this form. Let's go ahead and show you what it looks like on Church Connect. So again, I have the form, I've got the, the app here. And so I'm in the app, I've got the, the connect with us we already looked at, that's at the top. If I scroll further down, let's see here. Oh, is that not showing up? Let me make sure I got this set up. Uh, displayed when a member is logged in. I just customized that, there we go. Let me refresh this. I'm gonna have you address that. Oh, you're gonna have me address something? Go ahead, go ahead and ask that question so we can get to it after this. There's a prayer request form. And there, right there on the app, again, this is something that I was able to get to within seconds on my smartphone so because I'm carrying it with, I'm, it's in the app, so I'm carrying it with me everywhere I go. If I encounter somebody at the church mm -hmm. and I can tell that they like need some prayer, I can pray for them right away and then I can also be like, hey, you know what? Uh, or two or more gathered, let's get it going. Yeah, not only that, but I can also submit any information here in this form. That'll go straight to our pastor right. and he, they can pray over it as well. Nice and easy. So it makes it easy to gather that information and get it where it needs to go. And what was the question? Um, it goes back to the app, but I want you to address it anyway. Um, does Church Track plan to add their app to Apple and Play Stores at some point? Well, no, the answer is no, simply because anybody can download the app for your church right from their smartphone. And the, the process of getting them the app is really easy. Uh, at the top of the Church Connect page here, you'll see this URL for potentialchurch.churchtrack.com. I can share this link or I can even just click this QR code slash URL button in the top right hand corner. Let me zoom in again. There it is, right to the right of the URL. If I click on that, I even have access to a QR code that I can download. All somebody has to do at your church is go to that web page, either through that URL or that QR code, and they'll be prompted to add that page to their home screen. Mm -hmm. That's how they're downloaded. That's how that app is downloaded to their smartphone. So it's quick and easy. Anybody so can find easy. it. We make it as easy as possible to, to share it with your members with that link and that QR code that you can download. You can put that QR code on the sermon slides at the beginning and end mm -hmm. of every service. Uh, you can put it at the Welcome Center. You can make sure that your members have it downloaded as an image and they can share it on their smartphones, anything. On the back of your pew? Yes, on the back of the pew, anything. So it's easy to get the app to your members. You just have to give them, get them to the web page and then they can just download it onto their smartphone from there. Exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So that is the prayer request card. Again, I'm emphasizing both a physical and a virtual. You it, need both. You yeah, really need both. You need both. This makes it easier for people to access it, and it doubles the likelihood that they interact with it and fill it out. Right. 
That's why we believe you should have a physical and digital version of all of your forms. Plus, it makes sure that you are able to get it because a lot of times people will fill out a form mm -hmm. and they don't know who to turn it into. So yes. then it goes by the wayside. So if it's digital, when you're setting up your cards, you're actually saying who you want this to go to and alert when you yes. set up the card. So when they fill it out, it automatically goes to that person. So it's easy peasy. Yeah, no, we 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 love making things as simple as possible with Church Track. In fact, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably annoying David behind the scenes, switching back and forth. He always tells me, make sure you make it easy and then I have plenty of time to switch between screens and <laughs> stuff like that. I'm going to jump back into the Church Track account real quick and show you what Lori was just talking about. So uh, if you look at this screen here, this is the Church Connect page where you can customize the app and your Church Track account. If I click on this connect with this card in this little flyout window that I showed you earlier where you can update the, the card image and even uh, customize the form questions, I can select which user in Church Track gets notified when somebody fills out that form. Right. So right now it goes to the user, uh, matt at churchtrack.com. That's my email address. So anytime somebody fills out that form, that response goes directly to me. Mm -hmm. So at your church, if you're in charge of uh, connection or if you're in charge of like volunteer management right. and stuff like that, you can have that volunteer form or that connect card or any other form sent directly to your email address you so that you can stay on top of those responses. Yes. You do have to be a user. So if you're if you want your pastor to pray over the prayer request, your pastor has to have an account in Church Track as right. a user on your account. But that's that's how you can get information. That's one of the benefits of using Church Connect and having these digital forms is you can send automated. the responses directly to who is going to manage Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Makes it simple. And then last but not least, let's talk about event registrations. Yeah, we, we're, we love registrations. It's one of our favorite features because we recently did a big update of our registrations so process cool. in Church Track. So you can actually create a digital version of your registration, your event registration forms in Church Track as well. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate that for you. So I'm in the Church Track account here. Right now I'm on the Church Connect page or the Church Connect uh, screen. Let's go to the events and attendance screen. So in Church Track, we offer this events and attendance screen. It's got a calendar. I'm not going to explain what a calendar is. You guys already know. You're well, smart. Let's, let's hope so. <laughs> let's, let's hope. This is where you can take registrations, though, for an event. So to the next level. Yeah, to the next level. Uh, so cool. We, I mean, it's we're at the end of summer, so VBS is over, so we're not going to use that as an example. Let's talk about like a fall festival, mm -hmm. some sort of fall festival event. Uh, let's go into October... October 31st, that's when Halloween is, right? It's in October, right? So do yeah. it on the 29th, because a lot of churches do not do things on Halloween. Yes. So on February 29th, let's say that this church is going to do a fall festival type event. Oops, I should probably learn how to type. That Me would probably too. help. I do the same thing. Uh, it's going to be an all-day event, or I can say it's going to be from like 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., something of that nature. Uh, it's going to be outside in the front field of this church. And I want to publish, I want to make this event public. This, that's just a little, little trick that you can do in Church Track because this will put this event on like your website calendar, on your Church Connect calendar, so people can sign up for the event and register for it that way. And I'm going to set up registration for this event. And we make it really, really fast and really easy to do. Mm -hmm. uh, who can register for this event? This is going to be a big public event. We want anyone. Everybody. Yep, not just our Church Connect users because that limits it basically to just the members of your right. church. So we want anyone to be able to register. And we'll click continue. Um, and we don't necessarily need a detailed registration. We don't want parents to have to fill out a form for every single kid that they're bringing. Right. Let's just say we want a head count so we know how much candy and and uh, candied apples. Booths and, yeah, booths and hot stuff dogs like that. and everything you Exactly. Got. Popcorn, all that. So we'll, we'll say that we want a count registration so we can get a head count. Um, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Nope, no, nope, what's, nope. what's the question? What's the question? I'll ask it when you're done. Okay. <laughs> Now here I can say I want attendee types and costs if I want to charge for this event, but this is a fall festival. Right. We're not we charging it. Charge. Yeah, we're not charging. We're but we do want to know some information. Yeah, we want some information. So right below that attendee types and costs button is this form questions button. Let's go ahead and click on that. And already we have the name and email address injected here so that that's already started for you. And we can add questions really quick. And we have some pre-built forms just to make this really fast. Let's say we want to know your phone number, uh, allergies and medical information. That's important. Uh, hmm, that's, uh, that's yeah. probably good enough yeah. right there. And we can also create our own and say we want to add other questions just so that people can sign up. Like, let's say, short text, um, your booth theme or something like that. If this is like a, a trunk or treat, let's say we want to ask what your booth theme will be. We'll add that field. So there's that. We're asking that question. 
Um, let's see, need help affording uh, buying candy. We can make this a simple yes or no question. There we go. Add that field. Done. We can just add more fields, whatever our church needs to know about the people who are signing up to attend and serve. We can have those uh, form or fields oh, added that way. And then we'll click close. And what's great about this, this is what's really cool about Church Tracks registrations, is not only do we make it easy to create registration forms, we also make it really easy to share those forms. So we have this button yes, here for the event URL and QR code. If I click on that button, I'm given the link and the QR code to scan to sign up to register. Got and I'm going to give our video guy another headache. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the phone real quick. I'm going to give him a second to switch to the phone screen so he can show you what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scan this QR code and show you what this form looks like. So I'm going to open my camera app. I'm going to scan that QR code. And here we go. I'm not, yep, I'm not a robot, and I want to register for this event. And there we go. There's the form that I just created. So to sign up to uh, attend the event or to serve, you know, set up a booth and have candy and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I can fill out this form. And my church can better manage the event. We were talking about mismanagement earlier. Right. Our church now has the ability to better manage this event because I can take this information from my members. I can share this form easily with the link and the, the QR code. I can take in the information I need so that we can manage and coordinate and make sure that Everything's covered from candy to candied apples to the hay ride to the hay maze to the hot dogs and popcorn. And the medical stand for the Benadryl. <laughs> yeah, for the Benadryl and the EpiPens and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make sure you got all your bases covered. And you can do that with this form in Church Track. And you can also have a physical form as well. You can take the templates that I'm going to share with you and get that information out to your members so that you can take that information and, and, and they can fill it out quickly and easily and you can manage the event from there. So that's forms. Uh, we, we just talked about creating the forms and the digital forms and sharing them. Let's also talk about a few little like hacks because again this is the whole purpose of this webinar is not just to talk about forms and how to create them but how to make sure that they get filled out. Okay. So some little tips beyond just keeping it simple, keeping it short, relevant, easy to find, and attractive and good looking and digital and all that. And to the right person. Yeah, giving it to the right person. There's a few tips, that, that just a few things that uh, as the connection dire director of my church I've actually found works really well. Okay. Um, when, when connecting with guests, one tip or one idea that, that has helped me really well is to fill the form out for that person. So like if you're connecting with when you're them, talking to them. Yeah, right as you're gotcha. as you're interacting with them. Yeah, not you're not like stealing their information. <laughs> I'm talking like have the form on hand and instead of handing it to that person and handing them a pen and then have them fill it out and also trying to talk to them and and make them try to like uh, um, multitask. Yeah. You can just be like, "Hey, so your name was such and such. How do you spell that again?" Right. Fill it out. Uh, what's a good way to contact you? Do you like uh, do you do you like uh, text or do you like email? Okay, here it is. Uh, my pastor would love to connect with you later in the week and pray over you. Is that okay if he reaches out to you? Okay, great. And then submit that, and then turn that form in where you need it to go, and then you're done. And that person, that all that was done for that person. It just increases the likelihood that it gets filled out because you're the one doing it. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, another tip is to give them options. Like I mentioned, uh, even if your form asks for both email and phone, if you want to keep it simple. Right. Just ask, like, which do you prefer, phone, email, and you just fill in that information and you move on. The best part about that, Matt, is that you're getting that personal touch. Yes. You're indicating that you actually care and that you're not just another statistic for the church. Yes, and that's that's a key. The, the whole act of filling out the form basically makes the transition from interacting with them to getting their information mm -hmm. as smooth as possible, exactly. and it makes it seamless. And you don't end that interaction. You can continue talking to them. You can even just put that form in your pocket and turn it in where it needs to go later as you continue to chat with them, show them where they need to go, right. things like that. Right. Also, I'm going to pull up the screen here and show you those templates again and point something out. Um, on these templates, we recommend, I recommend that you put a QR code on every form. That little blue section Yep. And the And these templates, I made sure to just put a little indicator here or a prompt to add your QR code here. And the reason why I'm telling you to put a QR code for a digital form on your physical form is because 
everybody's got a smartphone and everybody that has a smartphone is addicted to that smartphone. <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie. I would have never thought to do this on a physical form. Yes. But never some, occurred to me. Some people prefer digital over physical so much that they'll take a physical form and scan that QR code just to get to the digital version of that form so they don't have to fill out that physical form. Or find out who to send it to because exactly. that information is always missing. So that does make sense, actually. It does make sense, yes. Another reason why is because half the time you hand somebody a form, they've already got their cell phone in their hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, people are addicted to their phones. Me, not excluded. I, I, you know, We all have our phones out all the time, probably more than we like. So some people will have that card. They'll already have their phone out, and they'll just boop, scan it, and then put that card down and move on because they've got the form already opened up on their phone. They'll just get to it when they when they feel like they're ready. Half the time I don't even know where my phone is. That's where my <laughs> Apple Watch comes in to tell me where I <laughs> left my phone. I'm going to go ahead and share these forms here in just a second, but we're getting to the end. Uh, I just want to let you all know here at Church Track, we want to help equip you to build the body of Christ. And we do this through our software, through the resources that we offer our church. We want to make sure that we are a blessing to your church Absolutely. as we partner with you in ministry. Um, on top of the giving you the ability to create these digital forms right in church track, we're also, I'm sharing these, these links with you right now here in just a second. I'm going to drop it in chat. We'll also have it in the description of these videos later when we drop these uh, videos online on like YouTube. So if you're watching this and you want to know if you can watch this again later because you, you like the information but you want to you, you want to be able to review this later, we'll have this video up on our YouTube channel probably in about a week or so. So keep an eye out for that. Also go ahead and go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. YouTube.com, search Church Track Software. Uh, our, our, our video guy should have the lower third here in just a second. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date on any new um, any new webinars that we do and also stay up to date on the webinars like this one that we've done and that you participated in and you want to watch again later. All okay. right. So a couple of questions. Yes. Um, Valley Baptist Church says, where can I find out how to get our church app? When I go to the link in Church Connect, it's just asking me to log in as a user. So let's go to Church Connect and yes. show that, David. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get the, 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 the app on your phone. I'm actually going to delete this app just so I can demonstrate the whole process. And, and understand that in Church Connect, there is a requirement to create an account the first time you um, are accessing the account. So this is not a Church Track user, as in you're accessing the database. This is Correct. a Church Connect user. So when you create that account, you're actually linking the information from the database into your profile so that they know that you're a legit person accessing yes. Church Connect, not somebody trying to be ugly. Now I'm going to show you how to get the app on your phone. It just takes a couple steps. So right here, I'm on the Church Connect page online. I've got the smartphone pulled up. I'm gonna scan the QR code. That QR code you see here on my cell phone, this is for this is the QR code for the main uh, Church Connect page for this account that I've been showing you. Now that I've got it here, there's this little share button in the bottom of the screen. I'll go ahead and tap on that. It's a little box with an mm -hmm. arrow on it's it. It's in the bottom toolbar of the screen. And in this menu, I can add this to the home screen. Mm -hmm. So if I click Add, there it is. There's the, I just downloaded the Connect app. And you, you can see some other Connect apps that we use. Uh, that, I've got my churches and then uh, the Spanish version just so that our, our Spanish support agent can show this to uh, the Spanish-speaking churches Absolutely. and everything. So that I just downloaded, re-downloaded this app to my phone. All you have to do is go to the web page, and you can get there easily with that QR code. But you just got to go to the, the Church Connect web page, click that button to add it to your home screen. That's on an Apple device. On an Android device, there's usually like three little dots in either the top or bottom corner of the screen. Just tap on that, and that's where you'll find the Add to Home Screen button for an Android device. That's how I got it on my smartphone. It's very simple. So just go to the web page, add it to your home screen, and you're done. You've got your Church's Connect page on your smartphone, and your members can do that as well. Um, so one question is, it was difficult to find where I can see who registered for that for the event. I think it would help a lot of people if you cover that. That's yes. a great thing. Great question. So if we go back to the events and attendance screen, and if I go back to the event that I created in October, the Fall Festival, I set this up for registrations already. We demonstrated that process. If I click on the event, I go back to that main page where I created the title and set the time, and now instead of setting up registration, the buttons have changed where I can view registrants. So if I click the View Registrants button, no one has registered for this event, so there's no names here. But if somebody had registered for the event, you would see, see all you'd see a list of names here 
What's really cool is from, from this screen, I can even send those people an email. I can click that send email button. So as people register, I can even follow up with them and communicate with them about mm -hmm. you know, what to bring or just reminder emails to go out ahead of time. And the event report is very helpful because it provides all the information that was put in that form. So when they filled out the event registration and, and filled out the form, you have a way to print that as well. So it's it's used in multiple places. It's actually really a cool tool. All right. Any other questions? Um, where can I find these church apps in Church Connect? I'm not finding any of these. These church apps in Church Connect? These are cards. These aren't apps. Right. So if I go back to Church Connect, these are cards that I added to this app. This, so this is one app, and these are different cards that are on this app. To add them, all I have to do is to the right of the QR, oh, not the QR code, the URL, to the right of the URL, there's this plus sign that says new card. If I click on that, I can add another card. So all of these little images you see on the screen, these are all just individual cards that I've added to the Church Connect app. And if I, I mean, we were talking about forms, all I have to do is click this form card option here. So cool. Click add this card. And I can I can add another card. I can add my prayer request card or my volunteer card or my event register. Well, well, event registration is under right. events, but uh, you can add like um, you can add an event card in here and link it though, so they can access it from both ways. So if it's a public event, they can, or it's yes. a published event that's open to everyone. It would be on the main screen. They could register there, Perfect. or they could get invited. Perfect. So that's both right. ways work. What's really cool about this is the Canva things and the coolers. Coolers, that coolers, yes. That coolers thing that he showed you earlier. Okay, I have to, I have to rein it back in because I get very excited about this. This, <laughs> <laughs> the card preview is really cool. But under there, where it says "Edit this card," you can add your images, and mm -hmm. that's where you add these beautiful images that you're seeing in Church Track um, on the Connect page. Is you go and you add those card, yep. those Canva images there, and that's what gives you that that beautiful look on your Church Connect app. Yes, and, and it's so cool because what Matt and Wes have created is beautiful. But then Matt also has his. His church web, a church connect web page for his own church that yes. he's done amazing things for. Yeah, in fact, I can even just pull it up. This is what my church's church connect page looks like. So it looks very different than the the church connect page I've shown you for the account that we've been using to demonstrate all this. This is my church. This is a real church. This I put this together for my church. I added my church's logo, the cards themselves. I used our branding palette that I showed you earlier. Uh, so these are the colors from my pastor that when he created the brand color palette, th these are those exact colors. So it just adds texture and it adds character and it makes Church Connect fit our church. I love mm -hmm. it. That's Are what I love about Church Connect and how fully customizable it is. You said brand power. That's what you called it. Brand power? Brand power. Brand power, like branding. You have a branding. Yes. So this for, is for your coolers thing and yeah. So so very cool. Oh oh yeah. You mean the brand kit on okay. Canva? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can yeah. So in Canva you can again we cover this in that webinar a couple weeks ago. You can add your brand kit. So you can add your logos. You can add your color palette. That way when you're creating any new images, all all the colors and the and, the, and the logo is all there already for you. So it just makes it easy to to add your brand and customize it to fit your church's look and character and feel and personality. All right. So any other questions, Lori? Yes. On Church Connect, can you have a form that links to the church calendar? You cannot have a form that links to the church calendar, but you can access the um, upcoming events from your Church Connect page. Yes. So I'm not quite sure, Howard, what you're looking for because the the form itself is linked to an event registration versus having a form that links to the calendar. That's, I think you got it a little backwards. So maybe reach out to support and we can help you with that a little bit. Um, just want to make sure that you have a good understanding of that. Now, Dwayne, you asked what if the event is multiple days, like a class that you can set up registration for those. As a matter of fact, yes, when you're doing the events and attendance, uh, I can make I can just go back into that fall festival event. I know this isn't really something that you would do for a fall festival, but I can make this I can make this event multiple days. So I can set a start date and an end date. Or if it's like this one day a week for multiple weeks, you I can, can do a recurring I can make a recurring event or I can or clone the event. Or you can clone it. Yes, that's what we love. So, cool. so you can clone events in church connect or excuse me, in church track on the events and attendance screen to make identical copies of an event on mul across multiple days. That does require registrations for each of those events, though. Yes. Okay. Um, 
Brooke said, can you share your, your Canva Other stuff? size of connection cards in Canva. Yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and share both of them again. I thought I shared the links to both, but maybe I, I, I made a little mistake. We'll go ahead and drop this link in here. So this is for the three by five oh, card. She said, well, she found them, but to share them again just in yeah. case. So that was the three by five card. That's what that first link is. And here's the four by eight card. So I just shared the links to those templates. You can take those, download them, make any edits you want. You can change the color, you can change the fonts, you can change the wording if it doesn't quite fit the tone and the, the voice of your church. Right. You can make it whatever exactly you need it to be, but this just gives you something that where like 80 to 90% of the work is already done. You just tweak a little bit and then you can print it and, and run with it. So Dwayne is asking, so you cannot use on registration for the class that may be multiple days. No, you can. You can create events on church track that either span multiple dates or are cloned across multiple days right. and take registrations for those multiple different events. But you, the, the, the attendees have to register for those multiple events. It's not like your registration is going to, to go to each of those because it, something may happen and they may not be able to attend. So you want them to say, yes, yes. I'll be there if they plan to or don't register if there's a, a conflict in their scheduling. Yes. Now, um, who was it? Uh, Sh there, there's a question here about how do I set up a, a simply meeting of a particular board? Of a particular, so like a meeting? So you want to just set up an event on the calendar for a meeting? You can just go to the events and attendance screen, click the plus sign, create a new event in the top right hand corner, or you can just go to the date on the calendar and click on it I love that. and say board meeting. Boom. I can well, set the location for right admin building whatever go into your setup i want to i want to show something there no no back where you were oops oops sorry so here we are we're in the setup set up and registration you have to title it oh i see okay board meeting board meeting set up and registration for this event what do you want to what do you want to show them um connect users oh so all right okay board members would only be church members click okay single um, registration just single is yeah. fine enable registration uh-huh um hit close and then go back in board meeting there we go view registrants view registrants and this is where again if they if it's a non-published meeting you can actually add names oh add and names so if you have a smart list and yes. you're, you have your board members on that smart list then you Elders. can invite them add to this names. meeting because it's not a published that. meeting and then have them mark whether they can attend or not attend so i hope that helps with that it's it there are many options in event yes. registrations but you the idea of a registration is not that you just have to pay for something or signing up for something but it's saying i can attend or i can't attend and that way you have an idea of who will be able mm -hmm. to be there Yep. Okay. There you go. So that's, that's, I mean, we're going beyond registrations 101 right. with that one. That's, that's going deep into registrations. No, Let's take a support thing. <laughs> She's a support manager. She's trying to head some things off at the pass. Uh, one more question okay. and then we'll end it. Go okay. ahead and give me one more. Um, uh, I think it was Chimane she asked, is it typical to have cards right. for upcoming events like women's kickoff on connect page for congregation? Absolutely. Yeah. Even little, even like, um, niche things for right. like women's event. I wouldn't sign up for that, but absolutely. Oh, gosh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can add events. I'll go ahead and show you in Church Connect. If I click on the Church Connect screen here on the account, if I need to add an event that I want people to register for, I mean, I can set it up as a public event. And so it'll show up when somebody logs into their account. But if I click this new card button in the top right hand corner, and I say I want to add Oh, where is it? And a, not an attendance a registration. card. Registration. Registration card. That's right. We changed the name. Yep. Click add this card. Here's what's really cool about this. I can actually select an event from my events and attendance screen. Mm -hmm. So I set up the fall festival. I know we're talking about niche things like uh, women's, you mentioned a women's event. I don't have that as an example here, but I'll just use the fall festival that I created earlier as an example. So I can add the fall festival. So that way I put this event as a, its own individual card mm -hmm. in Church Connect. And as people scroll through all the different cards on the app, they can tap on it and register for the event. So the, I just added an event on the Church Connect that prompts people to register for that event. So you can add your form cards. You can add your event registration forms 
right there into the uh, main mm -hmm. Church Connect page so that people can sign up for it. And again, that just increases the likelihood so that somebody actually fills out the form right. and does what you need them to do. Get it in their face. That's yes. the idea. Get it's it another in their way face. To, yep, it's another way to make it accessible. And again, if you, as long as you keep the form cards, or the actual form itself, simple, short, and relevant, you make it easily accessible to all of your members so they can get to it wherever they are. It increases the likelihood that people actually fill, fill out, out that church form. Right. All right. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we hope that this helps you. We want to equip the body of Christ, to uh, equip you to build the body of Christ. Thank you very much for joining us today. Hope you have a blessed week. Bye, Bye. guys.